Hey guys, in this video we're going to take a quick look at scientific models. Now a scientific model is a way that we can take a close look at objects in science. For example, the cell or maybe our solar system. It's, an also, the, it's also a way we can take a closer look at phenomena in nature, maybe weather or the northern lights, or processes, maybe processes that occur in the human body. We can use these models to look at these different things in science in a consistent and logical way. Some examples of how we might uh, look at use models to look at different scientific concepts are how cells function or weather systems, how muscles help move the body, effects of earthquakes, and also how different ecosystems work. This is just a very short list of a long list of things that we can use models to represent. So models help us make observations. They help us to look for patterns, develop and test for possible explanations. Uh, using a model, we can uh, look at that model over and over again in a controlled environment versus the real thing. We don't always have that option. Models also help us explain our observations, uh, predict future observations, and also provide for better understanding. So. Some examples of scientific models would include maybe a model of the sun, moon, and earth and that relationship. Maybe you built that model in the past out of styrofoam balls making the sun in relationship to the earth and so forth. It helps us get a better understanding of our solar system and the patterns and the movements within our solar system. Um, models that explain weather. Maybe we're looking at the water cycle or weather patterns okay, and help us understand how weather moves and, and will affect us. Some different types of models that we might see and you probably are not aware of, but models are not always three-dimensional. Um, they're not always something that we make out of paper mache or markers and glue. Okay, Models can be, in this example, a graph. A graph is a, a model and, and shows us information and data that we can learn from. Uh, models can be drawings. A lot of times we have drawings or pictures and we can analyze that picture. Uh, if we have something that's happening very, very quickly, um, it's always good to get a snapshot of that process and that way we can look at it and analyze that snapshot versus having to go back and look at the real thing happen over and over again, sometimes way too fast and missing things. Models can be equations, um, you know, different mathematical equations. When we get into chemistry, you have a lot of different equations and, and formulas in chemistry and those are models. And then we have you know, our typical three-dimensional model, okay, which would be uh, something that uh, we could pick up and hold and look at. Look at. So in this example, I have a three-dimensional model. This is a model of a plant cell. Um, and I can see all the different parts within this plant cell. And I can also take a model and compare this model of a plant cell to this model of an animal cell. So having these two close, okay, where I can look at them and be able to observe their parts uh, makes it a whole lot easier uh, to make these observations and draw conclusions. Now, we want to talk real quickly about the pros and cons of using models, the advantages and disadvantages, or the advantages and the limitations. So let's talk a little bit about the advantages. Uh, number one, they give us a better picture of the real thing. Again, if I'm going back to my model of the cell, cells are very, very small. You've seen them underneath the microscope. Okay? Uh, usually in a cell you can make out the nucleus down here and you can see that, but a lot of the other parts you can't see. They're hard to, they're hard to see. You have to have a really good microscope and even then sometimes they're hard to see. If I make a model, I can build this model based upon what I know and what other researchers have found and then now it's easier to analyze, it's easier to look at. It helps us to understand. Okay? Models help us to understand certain things. I could take a closer look and when again I'm looking at the relationship of the different organelles within this cell, I can understand how they interact and how they, how they work together and then also how their structure complements their function. Um, easier to study, I already mentioned that because in this example it's bigger. It could be the opposite. If I'm talking about the solar system and I bring the solar system down into my room, making it smaller makes it easier to study. Now, models help us out in science a lot. However, they do have limitations. 
they do have uh, some things, some reasons why they're not as good as the real thing. So for example, not the scale. Okay, this is obviously much, much bigger. Uh, I lose a lot of the understanding when I bring this larger, when I make this larger, versus having the small thing and seeing how those little pieces work together on the real scale. Um, if I'm going the opposite direction, if I'm looking at the solar system again, uh, maybe I, I lose an uh, idea about how far away really things are because our solar system is so large. Looking at a model really does not give me a good representation of the distances that we find in the solar system. Um, not as detailed. Okay, This is a pretty good detailed model, but sometimes models are not as detailed as the real thing. They, they're missing a lot of details. If we were talking about the human body, for example, as being a model, there's so much detail in the real human body, there's no way I can put that into a model. So we lose a little bit of that in the model form. And then function. Obviously, I've got this model uh, of the cell, but and I can see the different parts, but I can't see the actual functioning, the actual workings of this cell. It's not a real working cell. So I lose that aspect of it. So hopefully this gives you a better understanding of what models are and the different types of models and then how we use these models in science. As always, if you need to pause, rewind, or watch this again, please do so.